first question. Are there plans for housing less than $1,200 rent? And if not, why not? Many people need more affordable housing. Well, we're, we're not doing residential. Yeah. So, um, we have plans on the books uh, for a project in Pigtown, one in Franklin Square, one in Mount Clare, um, where the rents in, so the Franklin Square and Mount Clare developments are leased to purchase, and um, although the rents haven't been firmly determined they're going to be more like in the $800 range. And then in Pink Town, that would, that would be a for sale. Um, two, and a, two bedroom with a small den, one and a half bath house. And the sale price would be somewhere around ninety dollars to $100,000. So um, with today's mortgage, mortgage rates, you'd probably be able to get in there at somewhere around 750. Okay. So um, from our perspective, there's there's two things that are matter. Uh, one is that we believe in home ownership, not in rental housing. So over time, we're going to hopefully convert all of our all the houses that we've purchased and the ones that we're going to build into home ownership. And I think that's always the best thing for our neighborhood. Um, and uh, also, uh, meantime, what we're doing is we're we're rebuilding homes. Um, that are um, uh, disrepair, empty, vacant, whatever, and we're putting them back on the market at what is basically the market for Holland's today. And the market price for Holland's today is whatever it is, 1,200 bucks, 1,000 bucks. Um, we are not seeking, um, at this time anyway, we're not seeking subsidies or affordable housing subsidies or you know subsidies from the state or the city. Um, not that we don't think that they should happen, but because we're already uh, in this, it's quite difficult the work we do. I mean, it sounds like, you know, woe is me, but it's extremely uh, headbanging to do the work we do and to be then adding another layer of that, which is going to another agency or another city agency who frankly is not very responsive to the ideas of what we're all trying to put forward um, and, then, uh, and then trying to do that. So uh, our point of view is that what we do as the private sector is that whether we're a not-for-profit or not, we are the private sector and that we are trying to work through to stabilize and create home ownership opportunities in this neighborhood, um, and frankly in most of, most of the city, um, and that we believe that the city and the government is supposed to do other aspects of that. And I base that on, you know, like I said, I was a city planner for a while, I did that, I worked for Freddie Mac doing those kinds of things, you know, pri primarily in um, uh, low and moderate income housing. And so it's not a perspective that is, you know, un uneducated perspective, uh, it is that in order to really drive affordable housing, truly affordable housing, you need to get subsidies from the city. The city has to have a will to do it. So, just uh, an advertisement on that. If uh, folks are very concerned about uh, providing um, particularly rental housing um, or limited equity co-op type housing uh, in the future, on the ballot next year, November 2018, there's going to be a referendum called the 2020 referendum. The partnership is supporting, and that would uh, require the city to float $40 million of bonds every year. That would go, 20 million would go directly to help subsidizing housing um, for folks that are making less than 60% of median income. And the other 20 percent, uh, the other 20 million dollars would go to um, demolition and stabilization of vacant houses, so that we can create more development opportunities in the city. So I also, I, I slightly um, should change also. So on Mount Street in um, um, uh, uh, West Baltimore, near the police, across the street from the police station, we have received uh, money from CORE, which is a uh, I can tell you the acronym what it means, but effectively what that does is it enables us to build. Uh, to what is today's standard, and then it is a subsidy when you sell the house to the homeowner, and the homeowner has to qualify for that project and that property. So uh, in that case, we're able to do that. We're using core money in this case uh, to do some of the demolition uh, along, along the streets that we have. So. Okay, next question. Community commitment. Will Warhorse 
CDC have a representative to attend Southwest partnership meetings and the Hollins community meetings in the future. And will I'll take that. <laughs> and will local will local business owners slash entrepreneurs be given the opportunity to fill retail spaces developed. How are you going to publish, distribute news, progress updates about Warhorse plans and progress for Highlands? Sophia? <laughs> Stand up, please. Put her on the spot. She's a, she's a solid lady. Four months All of you can follow us on our Facebook at Warhorse Cities and Instagram at Warhorse Cities. Uh, we'll be discussing our Holland's plans or anything in the future. You can go on there and we'll be talking about that. We okay, appreciate your likes. But it's not specific to that. No, it's not specific. It covers everything, but we will be using for now the same platform for Holland and all the other projects. What is the timeline? Will there be any residents board to provide input on your plans? Is that all? Yeah, for the community. Okay. So, um, so we believe that uh, the work that we do is, is, so it's kind of an interesting perspective that, that we have. So as I said, we have 46 community meetings to do the police station, which is an interesting thing to think about, is 46 community meetings to Philanthropically, there was a million and a half dollars of our, my personal money, and a million and a half of other folks we raised money from, and then the city put in money as well. So, you know, that I hope shows the level of resolve and community engagement that we have that is uh, probably different and perhaps more robust than other folks. Um, and then uh, the other aspect of community engagement for us is that we have been working with um, the uh, uh, McHenry School, and if you have questions about how we engage with a how we engage philanthropically in neighborhoods that we're working in, you can uh, talk to the folks on um, around the police station, the work that we've been doing there. You can talk to folks at uh, Francis Scott Key Middle School, Baltimore School for the Arts. Um, you can talk to people at um, uh, Guilford Elementary Middle School, um, et cetera, et cetera. So we have a very uh, robust community uh, with what we do, and it's it's a combination of doing what we're doing right now and then also philanthropic that we do very much focused around our, uh, our projects.